Daintree River runs for 140 kilometers before joining the Pacific Ocean. The mangrove lining its mouth is home to various snakes, amphibians, and other reptiles, including the famous seawater crocodile. On board a light electric boat, David White organizes cruises among this green maze. Through years spent crossing the mangrove, David has become a wildlife photographer. For him, it's yet another way to share his passion for this untamed wilderness. It's a part of Australia that hasn't been affected much by uh, volcanic activity or even during ice ages, it was just warm enough or wet enough for the forest to hang on here. So it's a very ancient forest and um, the mangroves around us here on the side of the river are amazing trees too, living in one of the harshest environments on, on the planet for uh, trees to live in, in the intertidal zone between in the feet in the salty water. Uh, we find uh, all sorts of wildlife out here. It's sometimes very difficult. The wildlife is very good at, at hiding. They have snakes and uh, they're good at hiding too, but there's certain conditions uh, brings them out. Birds as well, they're more active dawn and dusk. Uh, lower tides, we get more um, opportunities with kingfishers and wading birds on the edge of the river. Just easier for them to catch fish. Okay, up here we've got a uh, amethystine python. It's Australia's biggest snake. Uh, there's only a little one up here, it's probably two, two and a bit metres long. And you've got the sun reflecting off its scales, and that's where it gets its name, because it reflects that nice purple colour. And it's just enjoying the, uh, the morning sun up there. Patience is what is needed for um, good uh, photography of wildlife. Uh, opportunities, of course, as well, which we have plenty of them out here. But good wildlife photography did a bit of luck as well, and um, I've had my share of luck over the years. But... Always got the camera beside me, because uh, the day you forget it is the day something amazing is going to happen. So. Uh... Well, estuarine crocodile lives here. Their name's a bit confusing, they don't care where they live. As long as the water's warm enough, quite happy in the salt or the fresh. In the winter time, they're very easy to see because the water's cold and they all get out and lie in the sun all day long, very easy. If the water's very warm, then they stay under the water and they can hold their breath for hours, so they are very good at hiding. He's hiding his head. Right, this, this little crocodile here is a one-year-old crocodile. It lives around here, it's got about maybe 50 metres or so territory and it's on its own. Mum doesn't care anymore, Dad never cared. And she's uh, our most maternal crocodile, Elizabeth is, uh, Lizzie we call her. And uh, she missed having babies last year and she was spending a bit of time around here and she found this little one when it was smaller. And it's not hers but she adopted it. And for 36 days straight she was sitting there watching this little crocodile, staring at it, keeping an eye on it, looking after it. Hard to imagine that one day it can get very, very big. So these little babies, when they're first born, they weigh about 50 grams, and they can get up to 1,000 kilograms, which is a 20,000 times increase in weight, which is more than any other animal on Earth. But uh, yeah, very cute little crocodile, very photogenic, posing for the cameras nicely there. David contributes to the species census. He knows the story of each animal living in this part of the river. After watching them for so long, they have become like family to him. It's a bit of a soapy, <laughs> a lot of uh, you know, drama going on out here. We have, um, have names for them. We have, uh, the girls have royal names. We have Elizabeth and Margaret and Beatrice. And we did have a Kate, but Kate turned out to be Nate. We had to change that one. Nate's our first transgender crocodile, formerly known as Kate, but now known as Nate. It's but very hard when they're small to tell if they're boys or girls. They have to get quite personal, so we have to wait until they're bigger.
Small crocodile from the log there. It's a three-year-old. He's enjoying the sun there. The river's cold, so the crocodiles are, are wanting to warm up a bit, so he's climbed up the log there. Got those lumpy bits on the back are called osteoderms. Osteoderm means bony skin, and it's uh, how they warm themselves up. So they're very, very efficient. They lie in the sun to get their body heat. They don't have to generate body heat like we do, so they don't need a lot of fuel to keep them going. A lot of body fat could last for a year without eating anything at all, and they wouldn't die. In the beginning of the 70s, seawater crocodiles were on the brink of extinction. There were only 3,000 left in the north of Australia. However, since being classified as an endangered species, their population has boomed. There are more than 150,000 today. We should be proud that the species that was almost extinct is recovering so well. And they're starting to return to their original habitat where they've been living for millions of years. But some of those places the crocodiles are returning to are uh, people's you know, favorite swimming spots or there's now where the crocodiles used to nest is now a house or a resort. We're gonna have to educate people about the risks. And as long as we, um, we just stay out of their habitat, out of their water, follow those rules, well, everyone will be safe. share the, uh, the beauty of the Dane tree. It's not just about showing people wildlife, it's about um, trying to change people's perceptions of wildlife. Especially crocodiles, because they are a feared animal. They, once you learn about them and, and appreciate what an amazing creature they are, then people lose their fear, because you know, fear comes from ignorance. Queen Elizabeth lives in here. Elizabeth, and Lizzie we call her, has had a nest in here. And there's Elizabeth there, just the top of her head. And uh, yesterday, the little one's hatched. There's a little baby on the beach over there. Tiny little crocodile, there's two it's on the beach there. But they're very good at hiding because they're not much bigger than my hand. Very cute. As we're here, it's impossible to sneak up on a crocodile. They're always aware of what's happening around them. I, I love being close to nature. It's just good for the soul and a uh, really, really pleasant place to work. So when people come here from other parts of the world, where they come from a city where everything's grey, or they come from a, a desert where everything's red and brown and dusty, and uh, people just comment on it a lot. And I have to kick myself and say how lucky I am to live in such a beautiful green place. And uh, you do get used to it, but uh, it is very eye-opening for, for people that aren't uh, used to this, uh, this much greenery.